The .NET Conf team is bringing to you a .NET Conf focus event on January 14th, 2020. That's all about building web apps with Blazor. This will be a free one day live stream event that features speakers from the community and also the .NET product teams. Make sure to tune in to focus.netconf.net and come see what all of the excitement is about. Ask questions live and get some deep training on how to build beautiful, interactive, and powerful web UI with Blazor. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the On.Net Show. And today we're going to be diving a little bit deeper into Azure Service Bus and taking a look at some of the core features that are really important for our developers to know about. Hey everyone, my name is Cecil Phillip and welcome to another episode of the On.Net Show. And in today's episode, we're going to continue our conversation about Azure Service Bus and really dive into some of the basic features that I think is really important for a lot of developers. So Ashish, why don't you tell us, you know, what are some of the features about Service Bus that mm -hmm. we should, you know, really know about and care about? Sure, absolutely. So we touched upon uh, some, of the, some of the introduction about Service Bus earlier, uh, but now we can talk about uh, all the features that we have available. Yeah. Um, so, as I mentioned, uh, you know, in the, some of the previous sessions, we have the point-to-point -point, uh, semantics with uh, with queues. With queues, yeah. Where the sender sends a message, the queue will essentially act it mm -hmm. um, and make sure it's never lost, uh, and the receiver can essentially receive the message as well. And, and that doesn't acknowledge as well. Yeah. Uh, so, so we can do that. Uh, we have the next one with topics and subscriptions, which is more of a pop-sub semantic. Yeah. Uh, wherein the sender only knows about the topic and mm -hmm. the receiver only knows about the subscriptions. Yeah. Uh, and then the messages are routed based on filter conditions. Sure. Right. Uh, so we spoke about uh, you know how we can send to these queues and topics as well, uh, but now let's let's look at how we can receive from each of these. Okay. Sure. Um, so you know receiving we essentially have two uh, two options. We have the peak lock, which is the at least once, and mm -hmm. then the receive and delete, which is the at most once. Okay. Uh, now, uh, we we're looking at the queue example over here, but it works the same way for subscriptions as well. Mm. Uh, the way it works is that the sender will send the message. Uh, the receiver will then lock the message when it calls receive, right? Okay. So it says, hey, this is my message. Uh, I'm going to lock it. Don't um, expose it to any other receiver. Yeah. The next receiver that calls receive will, res will then lock the next message, right? Assuming both of yeah. them have got the peak lock receive mode set. Got it. Okay. Uh, and once uh, the receiver says, "Okay, uh, you know," the first one says, "I'm completing this uh, processing. I want to complete it." It'll take it off the queue and obviously release the lock when it deletes it from the queue. Got it. Okay. Um, and then, uh, the, let's say the second receiver hits uh, hits an issue uh, and wants to abandon the lock. It'll simply call abandon, and that'll essentially keep the message on the queue but release the lock. Okay. Yeah. So now I can imagine this is for a scenario <coughs> where I don't actually want to remove the item off the queue, right? But I want to just I want to take a peep at it, right? Like right. I want to look at it first That's and figure out, well, can I actually mm -hmm. do the processing that needs to happen with this particular type of message? That's correct. Okay. So, so, so it's a two-phase thing, right? Firstly, you want to make sure you lock it, but you don't remove it from the queue, just in case something goes wrong on the receiver side. Yeah. It could be that the receiver doesn't know how to process this message. Mm -hmm. It was misrouted or a versioning error. Yeah. It could be that uh, the receiver is not ready to process the message because mm -hmm. some configuration said, uh, you know, values are not, not been set. Sure. Uh, yeah. And thirdly, uh, what if the receiver kind of uh, you know, restarts? Yeah. Uh, so you know, you want to make sure that the message is not lost because if it's lost, then uh, you know the queue can't do anything about it because sure. you you deleted it from the queue. Got so it. this is more like saying, hey, I want to peek it. Uh, I'm going to lock it. I'm going to take uh, you know a little time to process it, and you can you can extend the lock for as long as you need. And then you can go ahead and complete the message okay. when you're done with it. So how is that different from, I guess, if I don't have that setting and I'm in mm -hmm. a basic scenario where I'm a receiver, mm -hmm. I pull a message off, right. but I don't send an acknowledgement. Right. Right? Yeah. I'm guessing if I don't send an acknowledgement, mm -hmm. that means that the message is still on the queue, right? That is correct. Uh, so, so the way it works is, I mean, if you don't send an acknowledgement, right, uh, the lock is there for a limited time only. Okay. Uh, so you either you either complete, abandon, or deadlet the message within the within the time, time frame, frame of the lock, mm -hmm. or you extend the lock to say, hey, I'm still working on this message. It's Got taking it. a little bit longer for whatever reason, hmm. but I'm still interested in holding on to this message. Got it. Or you know, if for whatever reason the receiver you know just crashes and it's restarting and it, it you know comes back on, has no idea what to do with that message, mm -hmm. the lock will expire within that time frame. Got it. So it goes back into the queue. Got it. When I say back into the queue, it, it never really left the queue. But, but it's now not available it's, for other people to start working on. That's exactly right, and that's yeah. uh, that's exactly what we mean by competing consumer, mm. uh, wherein hey, you know, multiple consumers are locking, are trying to lock messages on yeah. the queue. If someone breaks or someone crashes, the next one can pick it up. Got it. So okay. you never really have an issue per se of losing messages. 
Gotcha. Okay, cool. So very quick uh, look into what the code looks like, right? Mm -hmm. So again, uh, we have the queue client and the subscription client. Now again, uh, we're calling both of these receive clients. Mm -hmm. Since they have different uh, API contracts, they are different uh, uh, classes, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, and the way it works is that we register a message handler, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so this is one way of uh, you know registering a receiver on it. This is mm -hmm. pseudo push semantics, wherein you're not okay. explicitly calling receive, but the SDK is doing it behind the scenes for you. Uh, and, and what's happening over here is you're saying, this is my message handler. When a message comes in, do this, uh, and then complete the message as appropriate. Got it. Okay. Uh, and this is because in the message handler, we have set autocomplete equal to false. You mm -hmm. can set autocomplete equal to true, which means as soon as your handler completes, it'll go and complete the message. It'll complete the message. Got it. Um, one thing to note over here is that there is no explicit abandon call, because if this if this code block fails, mm -hmm. it'll automatically go and abandon the message. And that's oh, awesome. built into the SDK. Okay, cool. So it keeps your programming model fairly straightforward, and you need to only worry about your business logic. All right. So this is almost like an out of the box pattern for me creating like a message processing pump. That's right. Yep. Right. Yeah. So that's exactly what the class is called in the SDK: message oh, receive pump. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, great. Yeah. That was a good guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so the next one, which uh, which you kind of touched upon, wherein you don't want to send the acknowledgement, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, it's it's out of the hand of the service bus. Uh, you know, broker, and and this is a contract that we can set. Mm. So you can either either use the P clock mode or you can mm. use the receive and delete mode. Okay. And the way it works is that again, the sender sends the messages as expected. Mm -hmm. uh, the receiver will simply say receive, right? Yep. And what that does is it'll take the message off the queue mm -hmm. and then give it to the receiver. Yep. And then uh, you know the message uh, responsibility now lies with the receiver. Got it. So okay. if the receiver crashes or has some any kind of issues, that's it. The message is gone. The message is gone. Got it. Yeah. So so peak lock is the default uh, that we rec that is uh, built into the SDK, and Sorry. that's what we recommend for most folks as well. Got it. Okay. Um, so so the next receiver will again pull the message off the queue and delete it um, from the queue, and then have a have its own copy. Is is this the recommended approach because it offers the most throughput? In terms of like processing messages, or? no. Uh, P clock is the recommended approach. P clock is the recommended. Right. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. So uh, not not receiving the lead, but preferably to use P clock. Yeah. I mean, so uh, you know, you can do something that matches your use case. If uh, if you know, higher throughput is one of the things that you worried about, but you're not yeah. so much. Uh, you know, if you're not sensitive to message loss, mm -hmm. maybe receiving the lead works for you just fine. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. But you know, in, for service bus, uh, message reliability and and uh, persistence is far more important goal. Yeah. Which is why P clock is the default on the SDK. Yeah. And that's that's one of the things that I, I find like is different <coughs> about this type of service. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's not about processing millions of records per second. Right. It's more about like the reliability, the durability mm -hmm. of the message. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Making sure that we go through the workflow, whatever the workflow happens to be, right. in a reliable way. Right. Yeah, so, so reliability is key. It doesn't mean that it's at the cost of throughput. Uh, so yeah. it's it's a it's a balance. Uh, but reliability is key. So the sure. idea is, yeah, we want to make sure your message data is stored securely mm -hmm. um, and for sure, yeah. uh, and not have you worry about you know, losing messages or losing data. Right, gotcha. Cool. Uh, so yeah, like I mentioned, abandon and delete methods are no longer required because there's nothing to abandon or delete because right. it's off. It's just a part of the, yeah. the, the SDK. Right. Uh, so yeah, so in this case, we have the receive and delete code samples as well. Here, we have the message receiver class mm -hmm. uh, that allows you to receive uh, async. Yeah. Uh, again, this will not block your thread as expected. Right. Uh, but the way it works is that you can call receive, and you mm -hmm. can have it wait as long as a message comes in. Okay. Uh, or you can have a receive with a, a timeout. Got it. Now, the receive async works with peak clock as well, but mm -hmm. the message handler is something that we recommend because it's a lot more straightforward uh, yeah. in terms of programming model. Got it. Okay. <coughs> Uh, so the next feature we have is uh, is rules, you know, and we we touched upon this with our topic in subscription, where you see the filter which matches the condition on the message and then routes it. Yeah. Uh, but we also extend that concept to have rules, right? Oh. Okay. Uh, now a rule is basically a filter plus an action, mm. right? And the filter defines which messages I want to act on, and the action defines what I want to do on those messages. Okay. Uh, now what what I mean with that is the filter would say, hey. Um, Send me messages that are that have the type order, mm -hmm. right? And I'm going to do some processing on it. Maybe change a couple of these user properties, which are which are uh, mutable, uh, and then send it across to a subscription, right? Okay. So, would you would you define those actions? 
exactly. Uh, so you can define it using, you know, on the broker itself. Mm -hmm. uh, you could put it through. Uh, so it's basically a control plane operation, which I mean, which means yeah. it's got the same, uh, you know, functionality as a crowd operation on a queue or topic. Mm -hmm. uh, so essentially, uh, we have a management client that's built into our SDK, yeah. wherein you can use the create rules async method to essentially create these. Okay. Yeah. So I can yeah. actually show you uh, the code sample, but quickly. Uh, the kind of filters we support are the Boolean filters. So true, yeah. which is everything. False, which is nothing. Yeah. So send me everything, send me nothing. We can also have SQL like conditional expressions. So they match exactly SQL 99. Uh, so mm. you can leverage uh, what you know about SQL okay. and then plug it into your, your filter. Sure. And then we have correlation filters which are matched against the properties, the header properties of a message body. All right. So that's both for user and system. Got it. But and so for the SQL filters specifically, mm -hmm. I'm guessing you're querying the actual message itself. That's so right. So you're saying like, um, if, I don't know, some field contains this mm -hmm. thing or mm -hmm. something is like this thing. Right. Like those types of queries. That's Something's exactly. greater than this or less than this, like those types of things. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you predefine the condition and you essentially make a management call to say service bus, do this. Mm -hmm. And it, it's part of the service bus topology. Okay. And then the, you know, the broker, the service bus broker code itself will look at each message that comes in on a topic and then say, okay, this is matching this filter condition. Yeah. This is the action associated with it, so I'm going to make this edit to this property and then push it to a subscription. Got it. Okay. Yeah. And and uh, you know that with that uh, in that effect, actions are essentially also a SQL-like expression. Mm -hmm. So you can uh, declare it to using the SQL update syntax. So you could say set a equal to b. Okay. Um, exactly how you do in SQL. Okay. Great. Uh, and this is and so the action. So when a message comes in, the first thing is that the filter condition is matched. Mm -hmm. Then the action is acted on it and then it appears in the subscription. Got it. So, so that's essentially w like one atomic operation. So it's not like something lands up in the subscription and then it needs to be acted on. Sure. It's just one single thing. Okay, cool. So like, because when you first said action, mm -hmm. I thought you were talking about what happened on the receiver side and like the receiver work. But oh, this, right. is, this is, this is pre-receiver, this is pre-subscription. This is pre This is happening like within the boundary of like that filter, that's that right. filter and um, that filter action. That's right. Yeah, I think uh, the words are a little bit overloaded, but yeah, that's basically it. You essentially Got set it. Uh, set what you want to do on that message mm -hmm. and only then it will be visible to the receiver. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So very quick uh, code sample. We, like I mentioned, we have a management client, so that's exactly what we're instantiating over there. Yep. Uh, then we create the SQL filter and say, look, if the source is from the orders, mm -hmm. uh, you know, orders application, Yep. Then I'm going to put in uh, I'm going to put in an action that will change my source to routed orders. Got it. Okay. Um, it's just a way of saying, hey, I you know service bus looked at this and now it's been routed in the right direction. Sure. Uh, for just one of the use cases. Uh, and once you define these filter action rules, then you can go ahead and create the rule with that last line of code, mm -hmm. and that is what your your client application can go and register with uh, with service bus. Okay. Nice. Um, so once you get an act back on that, that rule is established and your senders can start sending. Great. So then this might be something that I want to set up whenever I first create my, my service bus namespace and I create my queue or my topic. Mm -hmm. When I create my topic, I'm, <coughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. And then now, you know, part of my deployment script or part mm -hmm. of my, you know, infrastructure setup, right. I can go ahead and define these rules, right? The actions and these filters. That's right. And then now, like, my client is just concerned about, like, sending messages. That's correct, yes. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So, so let's, let's talk about transactions a little bit, like because okay. I know that's a big feature that a lot of folks right. always ask about, and for me that's one of like the differentiating features for Service Bus versus like some of these other messaging things that we have. That's correct, and that's exactly why we call ourselves the enterprise messaging uh, as a service because a lot of enterprises need to have a block of uh, code that they need to execute atomically, yeah. mm -hmm. so it's all or nothing, and that's exactly where transactions come into play. Okay. Uh, so the way it works is that you can group two or more operations within a single uh, transaction scope, yep. and they all have to be on the same messaging entity. So the same queue, the same topic, same mm -hmm. subscription, uh, or same yeah, same subscription basically. Yeah. Uh, and then they will succeed or fail jointly. Mm -hmm. And uh, if if any one of those operations fail, the whole thing will be rolled back. Okay. Um, and uh, so you can essentially. Well, it's a limited feature, so we have send async, send batch, send batch async, which means you can essentially send a message or send a batch of messages in a single go. Yeah. Uh, and on the message, you can either complete, abandon, dead letter, uh, and those will, those can be plugged into one single transaction. Got it. And then when you say roll back, mm -hmm. right, I'm, ass I'm assuming you mean like all of those messages are going to come back on the queue. That is correct. Like yes. anything that was previously marked as, mm -hmm. you know, taken care of. Yeah. Like those are just going to come back, and then some other mm -hmm. um, receiver mm -hmm. could go through the process of trying to work with them, or yeah. 
or if, I don't know, if maybe we just can't complete it, we could dead later those things and that's we send them somewhere else. That's correct. That's exactly right. So, so that's exactly what we're showing over here as well. That once all the operations complete, that's when you consider the entire block to be complete. Yep. Uh, but if any operation fails, then we can roll back everything and then the whole block is considered failed. Got it. Cool. So let's look at some of the code samples over there. Uh, so again, here we need to make sure the sender and receiver are on the same queue. We can start the transaction, transaction scope and then do all the processing that's appropriate uh, and then go ahead and complete the transaction scope as well, which is uh, right over here. Um, so pretty straightforward. Uh, there's also an exception block that you can use to yeah. roll back everything once, uh, you know, if it fails. Right, okay. Awesome. Uh, this is really interesting, man. And definitely yeah. thank you for showing us this. Um, I know the service bus um, GitHub repo mm -hmm. has a lot of samples and you know, you know, different ways of using the SDK. That's so right. So what we'll make sure we do is like we'll add that to the show notes. Sure. So everybody could kind of try out this, you know, all of these different features mm -hmm. and the code that you're showing us today. Right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, man. Like I'm really loving the service bus conversation thank that we're having. Yeah. And thank you all for watching. This has been another episode of the On.net show. And we've just been learning about some of the core features that are inside of Azure Service Bus.